fundamental partnership for Yarra Rangers Council. It did got that, got the recording over announcement. Um, so yes, for all of you, um, this part of the session will be recorded, but it won't include the conversation breakout rooms. Um, the Community Enterprise Foundation partnership has been really um, highly valued by our council and community. And I guess the, the, the ladies will explain this in their session. This all started to come together um, before the Yarra Rangers Council or the Yarra Rangers was hit by a massive storm in June 21. So to have some of the legwork on, underway was really critical um, to give us a bit of a head start. So Fiona is the, as I said, the manager for appeals and donors. Uh, and she, her work includes the bank's fundraising strategies and the response to natural disasters. And over the last three years, Fiona has been responsible for distributing $50 million into the Australian communities for natural disaster. You know, she, this is why she's one of our best friends. <laughs> um, and my dear colleague and friend, Tracy Reid, is currently the Community Recovery Committee's coordinator with our council. Tracy has an extensive experience in the design, delivery and evaluation of community partnerships and engagements programs within the local uh, government and not-for-profit sectors. So without further ado, I think we will hand over to um, their presentation. Now, once we break out, we do have a couple of questions, but I will talk you through that before um, we break out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Um, I'll just wait for presentation to come up. Thank you for having me, everyone. Are we coming up, Juanita? We are just one moment, please. No, no problems. Um, so, yeah, Fiona and I um, today will be talking about um, our program. The program at the regional, regional community. community. Ooh, ooh. I'm getting, I'm getting back, back. Maybe, maybe are you, are you, are you, are you Anita? Anita? Sorry, sorry. Um, um, so, so can everybody, can hear everybody me? hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, we're getting, yeah, we're getting really back. Really oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mike. Two mic. Right. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Mm, this mm, was working, this was before. working before. Anyway, anyway, let me, anyway, let me um, um, take out, take out, I'll take out my headphones, and we'll, um, we'll. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I won't sorry. be, I won't be able to tea. Um, um. So, so I just wanted, I just to, wanted start to start with a, with a acknowledgement, acknowledgement of country. Of country. Um, I'm, um, I'm coming to you today, today from Tamarong country, country, country in North East, in North East Victoria. Victoria. Um, um, and I also, and also want to the Yarra Rangers, Yarra Rangers is based on, based the, lands on the lands and waters of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Kulin Nation. Um, and um, we and have a lot to learn from Aboriginal ways. Oh. You're, still, you're still hearing an echo? Oh, no. No, stop now, stop now. Yeah, it's yeah, it's oh, oh. but it's back, it's on, back now. on now. It has something, it has to, something do to do with the with presentation, the presentation I believe. Let me try changing my sound system altogether. And if that works, that will be great. I'm not sure why this is happening now. And it yeah, was fine earlier. <laughs> no. It, it, Right, is that getting better? Um, maybe need to try it with the um, presentation on. <laughs> all right, all right. No, nah, no, nah, I'm still, I'm hearing, still it. hearing it. So I'm assuming, so I'm assuming you're, you're all, all still, still hearing hear it. I can talk with out a presentation. A presentation. And we and can, we can um, provide, provide the, the presentation, presentation later. later. That might be that better might be than listening to my echo. echo. 
It was such a, it was pretty, such a presentation pretty presentation as well. As well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe, Maybe take, it, take down it down and we can... And we can um, um, Let's just see if perhaps um, it helps if Alyssa shares this. Alyssa, are you able to do that? Yep, I'll give it a go. Thank you. Okay, hello. Oh, that seems to be working. Awesome. So if yeah. you want to just click click through to um, the slides that have the maps on them. Yes. Excellent. Um, so apologies, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with um, the Yarra Ranges, it is one of Melbourne's interface LGAs. Um, and we have a mix of medium to high density uh, urban areas, as well as a very large section, which is rural. Um, it's recognized as a very, very special place uh, for natural beauty and diverse first habitats, um, and actually contains some of the most environmentally important areas in Victoria, which includes the mountain ash forests of the Dandenong Ranges. Um, and it really is a spectacularly beautiful place to live, work and play. Um, but it also does have the potential to be a very dangerous place, um, as we saw after the storms in June 2021. Thank you. Next slide. Um, so on June the 9th, uh, just over two years ago, uh, Victoria experienced a severe storm, um, severe, weather, severe weather event, and the Dandenong Ranges was the most affected location in the state. Um, over a thousand properties were impacted with fallen trees and storm debris. 177 uh, homes were damaged and 79 homes were destroyed or deemed un uninhabitable. Um, tens of thousands of trees fell, um, blocking roads in and out, telephone power lines down, thousands of homes, thousands of people without heating, showers, on septic systems, so no toilets, um, phone and internet connections were, um, were down for weeks. Um, this photo here is one of the main roads on and off the mountain, um, just one little section that was blocked by the massive trees that come down. Also keeping in mind that we had um, the added complexity of COVID and extensive periods of lockdowns that people were also dealing with. So it was a fairly trying time. Uh, next slide. Um, so luckily, um, well, fortuitously, we already had a project in train uh, to encourage community to lead some of the aspects um, of their own recovery. And this would become the Regional Community Recovery Committees, or as we abbreviated the RCRC project. Um, this project, uh, as uh, Linda mentioned before, was conceptualised by the Yarra Rangers Council in 2020 um, in response to the pandemic. And so things were well and truly underway when we were in, when we were impacted by the storm. And actually I had been employed in my role a month before the storm hit. So we were, we were well and truly into it. Um, we had some lead up time to shape up how the committees would look. Um, we know that uh, the research shows that um, disaster recovery is most effective when it is led by the communities, um, by our own communities, which is really easy to say, much, much harder to implement. Um, and we want, really wanted to get to that end of the IAP2 spectrum, um, you know, that councils don't usually get to, that empowerment end. Um, we want a council to get out of the way, make space for community. We, we wanted them to be able to determine their best way forward, um, give them opportunities to find and use their voice, to make connections with others, actively participate in their recovery, um, all with the aim of delivering projects with um, positive social, economic and environmental benefit um, for their communities. Very lofty goals, um, especially for the local government where bureaucracy is our most favourite pastime. Um, we also need to acknowledge in this that this is not a community activated process or project. 
Um, and whilst we wanted to keep community at the centre, it very much was council driven. Um, so how do we go about activating a project to elevate community voices while still functioning in a local government setting was a bit tricky. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are some of the members of our RCRCs. They do look pretty happy. This was their first meeting, so they're all fresh-faced and bushy-tailed. Um, due to the size of our uh, LGA and the demographic variations with, with, within the space um, and our desire to keep things local, um, we had four regionally based committees. So the hill, uh, in the hills, the urban area, the upper Yarra and in the valley. Um, and although we referred to them as community recovery committees, this was very different from um, uh, many uh, CRCs that have gone in the past in that this RCRC project had funding attached to it. Um, and the RCRC members themselves would be the ones making the recommendations about where the funding should be going. Um, as part of the recovery response to the pandemic, Council committed over $1 million of funding, of ratepayers' money, to the RCRC project. And so this was uh, there to fund community-led recovery pro projects that would be delivered um, by community through a grant-making process. Significant contribution of council, um, it, but with the, with the goal of, you know, facilitating that immediate assistance to getting the funds into the community. Um, we also, once the, the project had been established, we also received a bit over $200,000 from Emergency Recovery Victoria um, for further storm specific um, projects. Um, so we, that, that added to the, to the pool of money that was available. Um, the RTRC members were able to lead the conversations with the community, which was really important. This allowed them to get insights and understanding into what the priorities um, were for their community. Um, and then they were responsible for making the recommendations around what would be funded. And having the members participate um, in this way uh, placed the power for determining where the money goes into the hands of communities um, who you know, are the experts in understanding the needs of their communities. Next slide. Um, each uh, CRC had their own way of working. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about the functions of the RCRCs, but if you want to know more information, please reach out. Um, I will put my contact details in the chat. Um, so if you want to know more, please, please um, do uh, ask. Um, this is a basic timeline of um, some of the activities that reflected the basic functions of the RCRC. They had a lot to do in a short period of time. Um, and this graphic has, is broken down into blocks, um, but really there was overlap and the continuation and things being done simultaneously. Um, to ensure um, broad representation from community, we had an expression of interest process, but there were many more applicants um, than there were membership vacancies. So then we had to go through um, an assessment process to determine who was going to uh, represent their committee, their community in each of the committees. Um, and by the time we had a full complement of all RCRC members, it was already November. So people were really eager to get going. We then did some induction. Um, you know, we, we had to spend some time getting to know each other, building that trust, understanding their role, reflecting on the goals that they wanted to achieve. So um, we really wanted to encourage uh, members to um, shape the focus of how their committee wanted to, to work that in a way that would best serve their community. Uh, and then they started engaging with their community. And so that was a way of, of bringing in that two-way communication really important for members to be listening to what their community is telling them um, in their need for recovery, but also then for the, the uh, RCRC members to be able to, to give that information to us as, as, um, as council as well. So the, the members, they conducted community surveys, they held online forums, they attended community group meetings, um, they did one-on-one -on -one engagement sessions. There was a whole lot of ways that the, that the members um, spoke with their community to get an understanding of what was needed. Um, 
there were some tensions. There were questions raised around uh, um, by some members of why why do we have to do this? Hasn't council already done this? Um, this is just a waste of time. We want to get the money out. Um, but it was really important that they had that organic um, community-based connections um, that were strengthened so that we could have an understanding of how um, to, to deliver um, the, the, the grant the grant funding. Um, then it came time to uh, to do the actual grant making. And Fiona's going to talk a little bit more about, about what that means. Um, so I, I won't go into that here. And then we have um, finally we have the the legacy of what they of what they've done. So each RCRC has created their own document which uh, specifies all of the um, work that they've done, all of the grants they've given out, all of the engagement, all of their priorities, their reflections, their learnings. Those documents um, they're not up on the website our website yet. But they will be. So if you are interested, hopefully by the end of the week that will be up, um, and you can have a look at that. I'm going to hand over to Fee now. Um, next slide, and she's going to talk about um, our partnership with the community enterprise, which was a significant um, part of the success of this project. Thanks. Thanks, so, thanks so much, Trace. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm on the land of the Zsa, Zsa Rung today and I pay my respects to elders past and present. If I could go to the next slide, please. I'm really um, pleased to be here to talk to you about the, the uh, start again, the Yarra Rangers um, partnership model that we've had. But I did want to give you a little bit of background about the organisation I work with and why we were partnering. So Community Enterprise Foundation was established in 2005. We're the philanthropic arm of the Bendigo and Adelaide Bank. And we were really established to provide the Bendigo Bank community bank network and communities across Australia with a foundation structure. Um, and interestingly, we are a really interesting foundation because we're a version of a corporate but also a community foundation. Um, and a part of my uh, role is uh, working with natural disasters. Um, so we also uh, fundraisers and raised $47 million for the Black Summer Bushfire. Uh, a lot of that was in Victoria, but for funds right around Australia. So our team works really closely with our partners across Australia to facilitate collection and distribution of funds. Community banks, and some of you will be very aware of the community bank model, but it is a star social enterprises, they're profit for purpose organisations that um, uh, have a franchise with the Bendigo and Adelaide Bank Group, but their profits go back into the communities. And the majority of the directors of community bank companies are volunteers. So to date, the foundation has um, returned more than $200 million uh, back to the community. And this particular project, we were really able to uh, work very closely with our eight community bank companies that operate in the Yarra Ranges. Um, they operate about 10 branches, Bendigo Bank branches, um, and all of the part, all of the CEF um, we represented the directors. They also were really there for the mentoring to the committees. So the model was the Yarra Rangers Council that facilitated and gave gave the funds, the communities that we worked with as the advisory committees or the CRCs, our Bendigo Bank community banks that were there for their local knowledge as well and their mentoring and the Community Enterprise Foundation that provided the trust and grant administration expertise. If I could have the next slide, please. And here's the actual governance framework that we worked with. So we had an MOU in place with the council. When the funds were actually came into the trust fund, uh, they sat in the Community Enterprise Foundation's trust fund that is administered by um, our Sandhurst trustees. We charged a 5% fee for that. 
but all interest earned returned to the funding pool. We provided grant making expertise and our online application. We adhered because the funds were sitting in trust. We need we need to adhere to charitable and trust law, um, and do all the governance. Um, all the CRCs were the local advisory committees. Distributions were overseen by the advisory committees, underpinning by the funding guidelines and local knowledge protected by the council. Um, final approval by Yarra Rangers Council, and that's what uh, Tracy spoke to as far as council still being a major part of the governance of these projects and getting these funds out the door. Was we supported by Tracy, the project coordinator. There was Yarra Rangers secretarial support, CEF, we provided grant expertise. We had a 1300 number and an email box that all uh, organisations applying for funds could come through directly to the foundation. Um, and that's not to say that the local advisory committee didn't take a lot of those queries because they certainly did. So we were also dealing a lot with the local advisory committees, um, our community bank net, uh, mentors and our the community development officers as well. Uh, reporting is very much put in place and we we do have a big emphasis on acquittals uh, to show that this funding has been spent in accordance with uh, the applications. We've done partnership reporting and also uh, independent evaluation. Um, and I was going to get Tracy just to come back in and to talk mm. a little bit more, Trace, around the final approval of the Yarra Rangers. Yeah. Yep. Um, so just in terms of, you know, each, each RCRC had um, uh, was the, the, the pool of money was divided uh, evenly between each RCRC. Each one had 150,000 that they could allocate. Plus um, we had 200,000 um, for municipality wide projects. That's not the total amount. We still have then other other things, um, the ERV money, um, interest. It, it, but that that was in the beginning how it was broadly um, divided, and then each RCRC had two rounds um, of of grant funding, grant of grant grants being offered. Um, they had a lot of responsibility in this grant making space. Um, they set the guidelines, they talked to the community groups, they hosted the information sessions. CAF worked um, with them in intensively um, and but each uh, RCRC member assessed every application. Then they came together to discuss what they thought should then be funded and then as a group they made their recommendations. Given that this was council um, ratepayer money, um, obviously, a community group, uh, community members cannot make decisions of where that's going to go. So the final approval, um, not bearing in mind the CEF process, but final approval of where that goes um, was we delegated that rather than it go having to go back to council and be a timely process for efficacy and efficiency, um, we delegated that to a director and manager. So they had the final approval of where that would go. Um, it, um, it expedited the process, it made it so much quicker um, and, was, and, was, and was much easier. Is there think, anything else? Steve? I think that's it, Trace. Yeah, cool. You can, you. you can pop in at any other time. Yeah, uh, the you. other thing was uh, the flexibility that this process and this unique partnership really had was our ability to pivot and we certainly demonstrated that. Um, from COVID to storms. So uh, that is absolutely a big part of this. Um, and the fact that we also received and distributed storm funding from the Emergency Recovery Victoria. Next slide, please. And this is uh, the grants program in a snapshot. So we received 179 applications um, from 1,100 well, 1,100 groups. We The amount requested was $2.4 million and we uh, were able to grant out $1 million, which is pretty amazing. Um, that was to 125 applications to 87 groups and leveraging $3 million. So um, 
and just amazing to think that this unique partnership with Community Enterprise Foundation, with the council funding it, with the advisory committees, the CRCs actually being empowered to be speak directly with their grant recipients, to work with grant recipients, pretty empowering stuff. If I could have the next slide, please. The key themes that we were supporting were health, well-being, re-establishing social connection, which was so important through COVID, reducing vulnerability and decre decreasing marginalisation. And you can see there that the pillars of environmental, economic, people and social, because of the themes that we had, that's people and social uh, pillar really high. And um, just a little summary there that it was a total of um, $1.2 million total invested um, when we included the, uh, the actual coordination and consultancy uh, funds as well. Next slide, please. And here are some of our reflections. I think the main thing on this page is that the committee members felt really satisfied of funding great projects and feeding into the recovery of their community. And that was, that was a message that we heard again and again. A lot of the points we have on, he, on this slide here talk about applicants, uh, that the committees actually saying no to applicants was challenging for committees for some of the time because of their local connections. Uh, the committee members' uh, capability in grant making certainly grew and, um, a lot of us that are in, involved with grant making know how complex it can be. So that was really a great thing to get appreciation from the CRCs that how complex giving away money actually can be. But at the end, committees were tired and they were they were done. They were done with the process by the end of it. Um, yeah, so um, just a couple of other points from this slide. The Community Enterprise Foundation had high touch in supporting applications. Um, groups um, that we did find were low on volunteers, and that was particularly because of a result of COVID and people not being together. So they were burdened by grant, the grant writing process. Uh, multiple grant programs on offer, also from council and other places, also led to some confusion. Um, and you can read the other points on that and we'll send this around, but um, that was some of our reflections. And the next slide. For the Community Enterprise Foundation, this was a landmark partnership, which we'll hope will inspire other local councils across Australia to think differently about how they engage and empower their community to have a voice in their recovery. We commend the Yarra Rangers Council for taking this approach and for providing the significant investment, ensuring that the committees were well supported and they were empowered to apply to apply funding to their local projects. An opportunity to represent and engage the strong community bank network with the Yarra Rangers. So that was really important for us from Bendigo Bank that our community bank directors um, were able to be represented and will be able to mentor. And the program aligns with our values and, uh, and, of the, um, and our purpose to feed into the prosperity of community by taking a community-centred approach, empowering them to have a voice to lead their own recovery. So that's part from me from uh, Community Enterprise Foundation and I'll hand back to Trace and we can have the next slide. Thanks, Fee. Um, I also just want to acknowledge Trish Madden, um, who couldn't be with us today because she is um, gallivanting around Europe. Well-deserved break. Um, but she was my rock throughout this whole project um, and the level of commitment that she gave to the, not only the committee members but community groups who were contacting her all the time. It's just amazing. And so we are really, really grateful for um for the our partners in this in this project and we wouldn't have been successful without them um so in terms of you know community-led decision making in the local government setting can be fraught with some difficulties um we anticipated a community-led council supported um model but we landed probably more on a council-led community centered 
Um, and probably the two most important things that we are reflecting on are the management of expectations. Um, we, we frequently heard, you know, from RCRC members or we're doing council's job or council's already done this. So it's really important to have a clear understanding and a consensus of what the purpose, not only of the CRC is, but why they're there, what they're doing, how they're doing it, and and making sure that communication is clear throughout the whole the whole process, um, and also operating um, under the second thing, operating under very much um, restricted timeline. Um, two years which was actually 20 months seems like a long time but it really is not given that the the committee's only met once a month um some met outside regular schedule of those monthly meetings but not always assessments all took up time reading um and it, it was a lot of work for them to do but um what well worth it we're currently getting um the project evaluated the first stage um, refers to the pro a process of evaluation of how we implemented the project that has been completed stage two is now an impact evaluation um i'm we're, we're just finalizing that up and that will be made available as well um so next slide please I thought I'd just leave um, with a, a couple more pictures um, and some quotes. Um, you know, RCRC members were really enthusiastic about their participation and it did give all of all of the really strong feels. And as Fee was saying, it was really hard for them to say no, but it was so joyful when they got to say yes. Um, the a number of, of members said you know that it, before they were, were members of the of the RCRCs that they were feeling isolated due to COVID, um, and that being a member of, of the committee just reinvigorated them and got them to to know community members that they didn't know before and and, and build some really close relationships, um, and the the idea of the community making the decisions was really well regarded. Um, because, uh, you know, as I said, who, who doesn't want to tell people that they've been successful in um, in receiving a, a grant? Um, a couple of projects, Belgrave Food Garden run um, community events to get people thinking about where their food comes from. Um, a community hub ran a literacy program and encouraged young people to share their knowledge um, with computers with older people. Um, the U3A um, in Hillsville bought ukuleles so they could share their love of performing. And this actual photo um, was uh, taken at our um, the final gathering, final celebratory lunch that the Valley CRC had. And one of the members asked if um, they could invite you know a couple of u3a members to perform while we were having our having our lunch um she said oh, i will only be one or two come 16 members came to sing to serenade us through our lunch and the joy on their face was just you know they were so happy that and the grant that they were given was like two and a half thousand dollars it wasn't a huge amount of money but they were they were glowing so i just have one thing to to finish off with it's a video if we go to the next the next slide um, and that's it for me thank you oh this is not going to work because we've changed the person I wonder Juanita if you could um if you're able to shuffle through to that video and play it, I think yours is set up for it. If not, you'll just you'll just have to get um get the thing and have a look at it. it. And hopefully we can do this without the feedback. <laughs> I can I can put the link in the chat and you can all have a look at it. But the very worthwhile video, they're very, very sweet. I think what we can do. I've just um, got a security block. 
IT must have done some changes this morning. That's okay. I'll pop the I'll pop the link in and you can watch it at your leisure because we are at time. Thank you, everybody. Apologies. Thank you. Difficulties. Thank you, Tracy and Fiona. Great presentation. Really covered off what has been a massive um, project and you know a pilot um, partnership I guess from Bendigo Bank's point of view I think we've learned so much from it um, what we've asked now is if you can all jump into the Google Doc which I'll get one of the Ada um, people to drop into the chat again and if you scroll down to page two while it's really fresh in your mind for the next couple of minutes we're just going to ask you to reflect back on that presentation and, and just pop in a few notes about what you what part of it spoke to you and, and, and what your thoughts are. So, yeah, if you could just do that for a couple of minutes and then we're going to break it out into our main group discussions.